Because, you know, they can step up the Native Americans and say, we told y'all nature was God. All the witchcraft people can even step up and say, we told y'all that nature was God, the power of the elements, staying in contact with the water and the sun. What other culture also gave birth to nature worship? Egypt. The first four deities they talk about are number water, air, earth, and fire, which is the sun. So now what's happening? We're coming all the way back around to find out that your God has no power at all. And you can jump up and down in church all day and say, Jesus is coming. And the wise will say, from where? And you'll be insulted and you'll call that blasphemy because they have the audacity to ask you, from where? Like, I don't have a right to know. And when did he go? And how did he go? And who went with him? And is he coming back alone? And if he's not, who's driving? Is he flying or is he floating? Is he going to be born or just go poke? And if you start using your mind that way, they call you a bad person. You know why? Because they have everybody here conditioned. They have us all trained like animals. It's called conformity. If we don't conform to their system of thinking and their, and their definitions of words, then we are bad people. If I say define Jesus for me, define him in time and in space, tell me where is he now? Where was he born exactly? You know what I'm saying? Proof. Give me some documents, not some stuff that you wrote. Steven Spielberg couldn't write a better book than the Bible. When it comes down to, it comes down to horrifying people, that's basically what the Bible does, spends a lot of time scaring the hell out of people, or in, it, in them rather. But those days have come where even the devil has to bear witness to the reality. I saw a movie the other day, somebody emailed me and said, go see Stigmata. You like that picture, dog. So I, I jumped in, went over and saw Stigmata. Stigmata is when people profess they bleed from their hands or they get some of the wounds that Christ was supposed to have gotten 2,000 years ago. Actually, 1,900 years ago. Supposed to have gotten. What happens in the movie, which is very interesting if you go see it, is this young lady who's not religious at all, all of a sudden starts bleeding out of the wrist, not the palm. Out of the wrist, they show somebody driving spikes in her wrist in her dream state. By the time she gets before the people of the Vatican and questions them, the priest says, oh yeah, we have recently found out that Jesus wasn't crucified through his palm, but rather he was crucified through the wrist because the, palm, the hands couldn't hold the weight. I said, now where did I hear that before? Where did I read it? I said, I'm sitting in the movie. And I'm saying, now where did I see that? I know a man who said that. They said that they found a certain scripture in 1945. Strange day, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I, I, somebody I know. In 1945, they found a scripture. This is confirmed. And they called the scripture of St. Thomas. But they have now come to find out that it was really written by Jesus, they say. And it was written in Aramaic. So they say, Jesus never spoke Greek. Jesus spoke Aramaic. I heard that before. <laughs> I don't know who put that in their book, but I read that in somebody's book where they said Jesus didn't speak Greek, he spoke Arabic. And in the movie, go see it. You know the script they show? The script in our book of Arabic. When we over the Torah, we put the ancient Arabic script, they use the exact script in the movie. The woman sits there and writes it on the wall, covers the whole wall with it. And you know what it reads, the first line? <laughs> they talk about the kingdom of heaven. And they say the kingdom of heaven is inside you, but not merely inside you, but all around you. You won't find God, they say, in the church or the synagogue. But if you lift up a stone, there you'll find God. If you lift up a pillar, there you'll find God, because God is all. This was supposed to be Jesus' own doctrine. In the cinema, we you go see a stigma is still out. He said, and they keep repeating it, and the movie ends with that statement that Jesus taught that God is all, that God ain't in the church. 
And God ain't in the synagogues and God ain't in the mosques. And God, the kingdom of heaven is in you. And not only in you, but all around you. And that sounds very familiar to me. And I knew why the person had asked me to go see that movie when I finished. But I said that's a message because it doesn't make no sense. The reason why all y'all haven't heard about it is because somebody don't want to make it public, but they want to give us the, what's that one, the Prince of Egypt, and tell a whole fictitious lie. A whole lie. How the nose fell off. There was no such thing as Israelites in Egypt. Hello? No record. They did not exist. No Israelites ever went to Egypt. There was no Joseph in Egypt. Now there was a man named Abram who went to Egypt, as we said before. But he was not an Israelite, and he was not a Hebrew. He was a Chaldean, a Babylonian. And when they got to Egypt, over there, a man called Kupu changed his name. Y'all call him Kiyos. Kupu changed Abraham's name and gave him an Egyptian name when he got initiated into the Egyptian order. And they changed the name from Abram to Abrahami. Ab is the Egyptian word for heart. Ra was the Egyptian word for the lustrous light of nourishment and creation, the sun. You follow? And Hemi, he identified with the invading Hittites or the Canaanites who had invaded from an area called Shinar. Moving out of Babylon and then coming over there and they called those people the devil in Egypt, a Papians. They brought in a Sethian doctrine. The Sethian doctrine that they brought into Egypt was the belief in good and evil. That Osiris was good and Seth was evil. And that wasn't Egyptian doctrine. They couldn't, by their nature, believe that both Osiris and Seth was born by the same mother and father, and one be a devil and one be an angel. Genetically incorrect. And if anybody was into genetics and alchemy, it was the Egyptians. But they brought their, their rivalry of their so-called Babylonian doctrine over into Egypt. So there was a Abraham who, who came over there as Abraham, and got initiated in the Egyptian order and took with him an Egyptian wife called Hathor, which is Hathor, which later became known as Hagar, the stone which became the black stone of the Kaaba in Islam. And the replica of the Kaaba, as you see, is a cube-shaped building, is not duplicated in any other Islamic architecture. Whether you're in Pakistan, or Sudan, or Egypt, or Morocco, you will never see another cube-shaped building. That cube-shaped building goes back to the third dynasty under Ayam Hotep, who built the Mastaba pyramid or the step pyramid and beside it a cube-shaped building or Zulza. It's an Egyptian structure. Muslims are encircling an Egyptian structure. And the deities that was in it were Egyptian deities that, uh, that Bilal, who was a Hebrew or an Ethiopian Jew, chopped down. You see? But there is no records in history, none in Egypt, of any Isaac being there, none of any Moses being there. No woman named Bethia went down to the Nile and found a little Jewish kid and pulled him out the Nile and raised her as her own son along with Ramesses. It's not, it did never happen. Do you understand this? And you gotta make the world know that did never happen. You know why? Because if it happens, if me and you left here and we went over to Korea and started a war, and we did, the Koreans would have it on record just like we do. America has records of when they went to Korea, right? And they tell their side of the story. And the Koreans have records of when the Americans came there. And they tell their side of the story. What's happening here is you have two sides to the story because these people had a 
encountered. 